Hey everyone, Pinchy Al here, and we're back with another episode. And on today's episode, we're on our Mark 7 wagon, uh, golf sport wagon, and it's a TDI model, and we're gonna swap out the clutch. So let's get to work because this is Pinchy Al's garage. To get this job done, we're gonna need new hardware, we're gonna need new equipment. So, what you see here before you is a new flywheel, clutch, pressure plate, and throw out bearing, plus the hardware necessary to install this. Now here's the catch. I was able to save $400 by sourcing the flywheel through AutoZone and then buying the rest through FCP Euro. SCP Euro sells this entire kit as a whole for like twelve, fourteen hundred dollars, but I was able to save about four hundred bucks by buying the flywheel through AutoZone because it was half the price. Don't get me wrong, SCP Euro is pretty good stuff uh, for pricing, but they couldn't beat the flywheel. I mean, I got it for three hundred bucks. Um, so we got the performance pressure plate and performance clutch, stock flywheel and a stock throwout bearing. This is the Endurance uh, Sax um, clutch here, and let me get you the part number for that. This is designed to hold like four to 500 pounds of torque. Um, as per their claims, there's the part number. Same over here. back of this Let's see Sorry guys for all the movement there it is right there So this is all the equipment that we need to do this job. All right, let's get you next to the next. So the next step is getting your car on jack stands. It's pretty straightforward. Two ways of doing this. Down here below, you'll see on the passenger side, this plastic rail right here is actually a metal frame rail. You can mount one jack stand there, or you can put both of them on the control arm bolt right here, like I have over there. It's just up to you. I kind of did it this way to show you guys that there's one place you can support it. Obviously the plastic might bow or crack a little bit, but mine's already pretty damaged due to the fact that I'm super low. Um, I scrape everywhere, so some stuff will break. Not a big deal, it's just a plastic. Your next step, will be to remove the battery, your intake, and pretty much all the surrounding uh, plastics. I put my factory intake back on because I had to get the car smogged, past smog, I just tuned it back to Kermit TDI tune, and I gotta put my new, my my intake back in. Uh, I'm gonna do a whole cleaning and stuff like that, but this DIY is on how to do that, but we're gonna pretty much get ready to move, remove all this right here. And then we'll show you guys what to do next. So first thing is, you know, remove the 13 millimeter bolt that's down below. Pretty much is the battery bracket right here. Pull the sock up. This little battery sock that's in here. Put your bolt aside. Let's see here. Pull the little bracket out. You should be able to like wiggle it forward. There you go. You got no handle, you got to just muscle the sucker out. So your 13 that was here, just put it back. That way, it's just out of sight, out of mind, you know? So that way you don't lose it. Just let it sit there. It's not gonna hurt anything if it just sits there.
Your next step is to remove the intake. You're gonna need a T25 and a T30. Just depends on what hardware is available at that spot. So we can get that out. And then the next step will be pulling the battery tray out. Uh, once the intake is removed. So the next step is to pull this little rubber hose off. I pulled the mass sensor off already ahead of time. Um, you can start by removing the MAF sensor right here um, or we're just going to unbolt it in that way. Yeah, I'm just going to unbolt it. I'm going to leave this, plug, uh, leave this uh, clipped on. I'm just going to unbolt it from here once it's all removed from over here. Make more sense. So I'm using T25 to remove the intake box. clipped on easy stuff that removes that portion of the intake and then we're going to remove all the torques that sit around the box here this will just help you wiggle things around a little easier it's not a hundred percent necessary but I like to do it this way um, and the reason for this is just you have access to this this stupid hose now that sits here and then you just pull up on the grommets just be careful with the coolant line that sits right in front of your intake box don't yank it out too hard but that removes that portion of the intake box And then you got two, two T125s right over here. Just gotta dangle it here a little bit. So now that we got access, now we have full access to the shift linkage, the starter, the uh, slave uh, cylinder here, um, a couple wires, the reverse sensor. Uh, unable to, you now you're able to unplug everything right here to get to the actual transmission because there's a couple bolts on the top, and then you got to work with all the bolts that are underneath after the fact. So next step is to remove this um, tray because the tray is now officially in the way of us getting the shift linkage removed uh, on the top and towards the back of the transmission. So uh, this should be, let me double check here. 13, oh, that's the one I left there, leave that one there. These are gonna be tens or torques. Looks like there's a torques on there. Let's see, a T30? Yeah, buddy, so there's a T30 torch right on top. There's two of them actually. One here and one back here. Okay, two T30 torques. Uh, this looks like there's a sensor plugged in right here on the actual um, on here. So let's see if we can unmount it. Oh, yeah, super easy to unmount. Okay. 
Okay, so this one, you pull forward and pull up, and it unmounts this little sensor that's chilling on top of here. I'm not gonna mess with that and unbolt it. Uh, oh, there's another one. There's one more bolt, and it's back here in the back corner. Um, looks like it's a 10, and it's like kind of against the firewall. You guys can see right over here. There's one more right there. All right, so I'm taking off the 10 millimeter that's over here. Now there's one more thing that you're gonna have to be careful with unless you break it off. Um, the main power wire for the battery and the car itself is kind of crimped onto this side piece right here. So we gotta figure out how to take it off without damaging it or just rip it off. I mean, it's not a big deal. It's just gonna make the wire less loose. I mean, more loose. It doesn't affect any type of performance or anything like that. So there's a 10 millimeter that was holding the tray against the firewall right here. Uh, the, the piece I'm talking about is right here. So I'm gonna try to yank it off slightly. Yep, yep, came right off. Perfect. All right, so here comes the battery tray out, just like that. We're gonna put the hardware in the tray together. That way we just put it back the same way. So now what you're seeing here, uh, you'll see this little, I don't know what this is. Um, probably not gonna mess with that. Um, but this one sits on the side of the battery tray. We're probably going to want to stuff it over here just so it's out of uh, harm's reach or anything that we can do to damage it. And you'll see here there's one, two, three 13 millimeter bolts. You have a 13 for the um, for the pendulum if you want to remove that. There's two little, um, oh this is a clip on top. I don't know why there's no clip on the bottom. Oh, it's a little push-in. Okay, that's pretty easy. So you have a little C-clip up here, or not C-clip, but um, kind of like on the Mark IVs. It's only on one side. Um, there's a 13 on the starter. You have a clip right here for the sensor. And then there's a cover for this guy. we we'll get to that in just a minute. Um, you have your motor mount brackets, 18s all around. Uh, it looks like you probably only need to remove the top three. We might have to remove the bottom three as well. So these three plus these three to get the transmission actually out of the car. <laughs> I'll see what I what I what I get into when I get to that point. Um, there's a triple square or an 18 on on the top of the transmission. I'll show you guys all this hardware, but this is what I'm looking at immediately right now, and then we'll um, walk you through everything. But from what I see on top, I'm looking at one, two, three, four, thirteens, a clip. 513s, another clip, clip, uh, the 18 that's holding this on here, the 18 that's holding this one down here, there's probably another one here, and the starter obviously. So that should be all the hardware for the top of the transmission. There should be more underneath to unbolt it completely. Uh, we still got to get to the axles. Uh, we still have to get to the, um, uh, probably removing the passenger side axle, leaving the driver side. The transmission doesn't go, it doesn't really interfere in this direction, it interferes in this direction on the passenger side. So removing the driver axle tends to be a better option um, because we have to move the transmission out this way. So moving it out of the way completely is a better option. Yeah, it adds about another 15 to 20 minutes worth of work, but at the end of the day, it makes life easier coming out and going back in. Uh, it's up to you guys on that portion if you want to remove it, but I'm going to remove it. 
All right, so I'm going to show you guys how this kind of works on the Mark 7, the shift linkage. Um, the main one, not the pendulum one, but the actual uh, reverse and uh, adjuster, height adjuster one. Um, so you'll see here, there's this little white clip. You kind of pull the clip out and out slowly, and then this comes out. Okay. That will come out from here, but it won't allow you to take it all the way out. The actual uh, head right here of the shift linkage right here on this one, um, you got to use a little flathead screwdriver and get it started with a little pry right here. So you're going to put your flathead inside here and just give it a little push until it comes out and then just pull it off and separate the two. Uh, once you do that, you're going to turn this uh, clockwise as far uh, to the right as possible and then you're gonna pull all the way out and you're gonna kind of curve it out and it'll come right out for you that'll just get out of the way you want as much stuff out of the way as possible uh, just because when you're doing this you don't want to grab on it and then use it as something to pull on and you end up breaking something and then you end up buying parts that you don't need to buy uh, the next step is these three uh, you're gonna need a deep socket 13 and then the two 13s right here at the bottom um, pretty straightforward These don't go on very tight. I'm gonna go grab my deep socket. Be right back. This bolt is this bolt uh, so long. You still gotta take off the one that goes on the transmission. This is just to get the linkage off. Let's see if I can zip it off with the gun. I don't think I have enough angle. <laughs> it did work. <laughs> That's satisfying. Okay, so now all three bolts are removed off the shift linkage. Um, just move them out of the way. Now you see all the... Uh, you can see everything in here nicely. Uh, with a lot more space. Um, so there's an 18 here and here are the primary two big 18s that are on the actual engine. 
uh, that go from the uh, engine to transmission to the engine. Those are the two big ones. Um, you're definitely gonna need a deep socket on this one here because the thread on that thing is massive. Let's see if you guys can see that. This thing is like almost an inch and a half long. It's ridiculous. So a deep socket is mandatory for this guy. You see this one here. It's got a triple square port, but you can still use an 18 on that as well. And then we gotta take apart, take out the starter first. We want the starter out first before we start unbolting everything there. The bolts that go on the starter actually bolt into the um, to the actual engine as well, so it's all kind of like a a good starting point to start removing parts off the transmission. But we're not going to get to removing these top ones until the axles are removed um, completely, and we're only going to be removing the driver side one. Just another again, another update on that. So I remove the 13 on the starter. It gives me access to the actual eight, the actual 18 millimeter bolt that's behind that bolt. Um, again, if you have a Mark IV, if you've ever done transmission work on a VW, they tend to have these dual purpose bolts that have like, you can put two bolts on them pretty much. Um, so right now I'm pretty much removing whatever wires are attached to the starter here. We don't want to bring them along when the transmission drops. A little flathead here, a little cover. This little cover is kind of weird. I don't know how it comes out. that trying to figure that out pull out the wire for the uh, starter there so you have these two wires for your starter one traditional push down and pull one is the newer style pull out and then push down and pull uh, clip Just trying to get to this last bolt here so I can remove the power wire that goes to the starter. Take the clip off. But I don't see anything I can use to actually just pull it off. This is dumb. Like they don't want me to remove the starter or something. There we go. Holy crap. It's just in there, just so you guys know. So there's the 13 right here. Uh, make sure you bring along your deep socket and your ratchet for this 13. You can't do it with the shallow. Now any of these uh, dual purpose nuts or these bolts that you take off, as a habit of mine, just put the bolt back on, the nut back on in its place. It just gives you a better chance not to lose little things like this. 
I don't like losing these bolts or nuts because it just makes more of a headache down the road. Honestly. I'm curious in what. So yeah, it's just literally just a really hard, this little thing, you just gotta wiggle the crap out of it until it comes out, just so you guys know. If you guys have a hard time taking it out like I did. Now, typically I like to put them back on with a couple turns just so I don't accidentally pull them out or drop them all right so now all that's left now is the 18s here but I'm gonna pull the starter out because the starter is now ready to remove uh, we have the 18 up here and it should be an 18 nope there's a hybrid one down here too there's a 13 and an 18 down below uh, I was trying not to work on the bottom yet but we have to work on the bottom now after this. So I'm gonna pull off this 18 here and then I'll pretty much walk you through the bottom process as well. All right, so once you unbolt the 18 on top of the starter, it won't let it come out because the slave cylinder is in the way. So we have to work our way back to the bottom. So make sure you have a 13 and 18 ready. I'll show you guys down here below. Whoop. You guys see here is where the uh, 13 and 18 will be chilling. So take off the 13 because it has a bracket attached to it. Once you take that one off, this 18 pops out. Take that out and then you'll be able to take the starter out because it will no longer be touching the uh, slave cylinder. Like so. Uh, you'll see here here's the 18 just move it to the wiggle it to the side and it just gives you just enough clearance to pull the starter all the way up just like that make sure you keep your bolts with your starter I like to just keep everything together so no mishmash stuff so it looks like we're getting very very close to removing this bad boy the next step is the axles and then the dog bone and then we're gonna remove all the hardware and we can drop the transmission all right so since I'm gonna be removing the driver's side axle you need a 24 millimeter 12 point socket for this guy half inch so you can use your breaker bar make sure you put a screwdriver in here inside the rotor teeth okay then make sure you have some lug nuts in the rotor do not depend on this little tiny screw to hold your rotor use the lug nuts that way you don't snap this stupid screw you're gonna break it loose and then use your impact gun to pull it all the way out now what I do if it's rusted in there a little bit <coughs> hand thread the bolt about four or five times and start whale it in with the hammer or with the back end of your breaker bar until it pops it out it'll pop it out don't worry guys um, <clears throat> once you do that <coughs> you need to remove the 313 uh, 13 or 16 of no, the 316 uh, bolts for the ball joint that way you can pop the axle out completely once you unbolt it from the hub so you guys can see I have this really long set of extensions and an M10 at the end and pretty much I still use my screwdriver and I still keep my bolts in the hub and what I do is I <clears throat> feed this guy in and what I do is I angle it just good enough on the hub where I can get two bolts at a time see broke that guy loose and then just do the one right above it. 
So I just do it just enough so both of them can, f I can do two at a time. So cut my time in half doing this. So now once that's done, pretty much all you need to do is um, break them loose. I take them off really quick with the impact and then take the three 16s underneath down and I'll show you guys how to pop the axle out. All right, find a good angle. So we're gonna get the 16 right here. Remember, we already broken loose the axle nut and we've taken all six of the axle bolts off. So all that's left now is the ball joint to be removed. And I like to do it this way just because I don't like to work too hard when I do my repairs or do my services. Um, I try to find some easy shortcuts, but sometimes it's just the long cut is the easier way to go. You'll see there, already wants to pull off of here. Just like that, it should have enough angle now to pop this axle out. Um, if it's still stuck in here because the axle is slightly rusted, put the bolt back in and kind of give it another couple jabs and see if it'll come out. Because they like to they like to rust and get stuck in there, so you'll have this problem, but. Once you do that, it should pop right out. This guy does not want to pop up. He's being a little stubborn, little guy. I'm just prying on the lip right here. Trying to figure out why won't he pop out. I see it coming, but it shouldn't be this hard, honestly, guys. But again, I bought this is a East Coast car, so it has a little bit of rust on it. Being a little, a little turd. I got about another inch of play back here, so it's definitely not the problem right there. It's just stuck right over here on this lip. So what I ended up doing was hitting it from the outside of the rotor with something blunt on the end, so I didn't damage any of the threads, and then hit it on the lip that's down below. It was just caught, and that was it. That's how you get your your driver's side uh, axle out. Uh, getting it back in should be a lot easier than that. I'm probably going to uh, clean out the splines as best I can, same inside of here, and probably going to uh, grease them up a little bit better. Um, more than likely, the grease that was in here pretty much dried up and pretty much caused it to get it, make it hard to come out. So now that we got both axles removed, um, or unbolted one of them removed one of them unbolted the passenger side just unbolted from the uh, the actual hub Next step is your two 16s, and I think this is like a 21 right here. We have to remove this Thing here. I think it's a dog bone 
doesn't look like a dog bone. I call it a torque mount. We'll call it just a torque mount because it does absorb the uh, forward and back motion of the engine's rotation. So we'll call this a uh, torque mount, aka dog bone mount. We gotta remove this guy so we get access, or well, that way we can actually drop the transmission. Um, I don't see anything currently in the way that will cause the transmission to get caught, so no needed yet for the removal of the axle cup. Most of the time when I do transmissions, I remove the passenger side axle cup um, because it likes to get caught on the back hardware or the back portion of the engine. I could see where it might cause an issue. I'm not 100% sure yet. Um, we have some space to clear it, um, but I'm not there yet. So when I actually get to the point when removing the transmission, we'll see if it becomes a problem or not. But right now we're gonna be removing this guy right here. All right, we're back. So you're gonna take off the two 16s here. There's a 16 here, here, and then right up over here in this corner. So there's three 16s in a row. Um, we're just getting ready to get the transmission removed. So I'm already taking off the lower hardware, but not the upper ones yet. So once these two are off, remember the length, guys. The really long one is the back one. The shorter one is the front one. These are important for you guys to know. Um, this guy over here is a 22. So make sure you get your breaker bar or your extension and get that guy off so this bar is completely out of the way. So taking this guy off. Taking these two off. So let you slide that sucker out. Just like that. Just set it behind your engine or uh, behind the uh, subframe. Doesn't need to go somewhere else. Just keep it in the area where you took it apart. Here's a 16 that I was talking about. Here's one, two. Now keep an eye on what they look like, guys. You see these little washers on them? They have little washers on these. Very important for the process. Make sure you don't forget where they belong, okay? One, two, and then there's a third one, nice and long. It's right over here, right underneath the starter. This one doesn't have a washer on it, so that's how you know the difference on that. Okay, now there's a big one right above it, right here. Um, you're gonna find out what size it is. It might be a, it might be a 16. No, that's the 18 that sits up there. So. I have a 19 here, I'm going to confirm. Yeah, it's an 18. And that's the one that sits up here. And that's the last one for underneath the transmission. That's all the hardware for the transmission on the bottom of your vehicle. The next step, pretty much, is you're going to need to get something to put on <coughs> um, this oil pan. This is a plastic oil pan. Eesh. Is it plastic? No, is that the cover? Yeah. Oil, pen. oil pen's metal. Okay. Um, I'm gonna take this cover off. So I don't damage the plastic cover so I can put a piece of wood on here. So I can actually uh, lift and lower the trans uh, engine without damaging it. So all the hardware removed, the dog bone removed underneath. I'm down to the last two top bolts right here. The two 18s on the transmission. And then I have the five 18s on the motor mount and the bracket. Now, personally, I would try to do this with the bracket in place, but it's not that easy. Remove the top bracket and the motor mount, okay guys? Believe me when I say this, it will save you a lot of time and a lot of headaches. Cause you're gonna get one coming up 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to break loose this guy first. So it's okay if you remove all the top bolts now. I put a jack and a piece of wood underneath the pan um, to support the weight of the engine. So here's the first 18 right here. This one's annoying. It's really long. Let's see, someone's texting me here. So now, this guy, there you go. Let's see if I can pull it out by hand, yep. Everything's still sandwiched together with the, uh, the motor mounts and everything. It's not uh, putting any tension on the bolt, so it's easy. This is ridiculous. Look at how long this bolt is. This 13 millimeter thread here, and then this guy right here. All right, that is everything. Everything is completely unmounted. Um, forgot one thing. This guy right here, um, your uh, slave cylinder. I hate doing this part because it makes a mess. Um, we kind of want to unbolt. I'm going to take this bracket off and then I'm going to fish the line over here. I'm going to unplug it and then fish it over here and keep it up high. As long as this is higher than the reservoir, it won't leak. Um, so let me see what I can do. All right, you guys can watch. The transmission's already separating from the pretty much the bell housing and the engine. As I break loose the uh, hardware, not liking this. Before I take it all the way out. Hmm. Okay. Before I take it all the way out, I'm going to pull the line because this is wanting to come out not like hard. I can already feel it wanting to drop. So, uh, before you actually do this, like I was doing it, I didn't think this was going to be that as aggressive. Um, I've honestly have never taken a transmission out that wants to just come right out. It's impressive, actually. Um, usually you unbolt it and it's stuck there. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to take out the, um, the slave cylinder right now. And then uh, I'm about to set the, the slave filler, whatever this thing is called. I don't know what this is, but I gotta unclip it right now. And then we gotta pretty much wrap it with, a, with some, um, sandwich bag and a rubber band so it just doesn't make a mess and then we're gonna slide it under and over and put it up here on this corner okay so I'm gonna get ready to pull this guy out A little clip that you kind of fandangle from the bottom and then pull straight up and then you pull this out slowly pull the clip back down and ever so graciously cover it in one of these 
a zip tie or a rubber band if you have one. I mean, couldn't find a rubber band, so I found a zip ties. I have zip ties for days. And you want to try to like just keep it facing up like that. I couldn't fish it over right now because it's it's not a big deal at the moment. It will be eventually when I get to that point. So next, I'm hoping once I unbolt this. Okay, three bolts out. Now we gotta take the bracket off. These two brackets for the bolt, two bolts for that bracket. One more right there. All right, All right. so now the bracket's now removed. Just like that. So no need to worry about the motor mount because you're not lifting the in, uh, transmission up. You're more like you're going to be trying to figure out how to get it down. So everything's done. Now we're at the point where we got to take the uh, transmission actually out of the car. So I'm going to get a jack and put a jack underneath on the transmission itself and see if I can maybe use the jack to help me support it and move it towards the back or towards the passenger tire. Okay, so I put a two by four long ways, not uh, diagonally, but uh, longitudinally. So I put a little bit of, I put a little bit of tension on, not a lot, but I dropped the engine a little bit. So this should give me some room to grab it here and back here somewhere.
Huh. Not bad. It's actually almost out. So, maybe if I drop the transition a little bit. It's caught on something, and I can't find it. Cause I got it almost so ready to come out. That noise you hear is the wood cracking. don't know what it's on what it's catching on actually I think it's catching on the freaking axle cup yeah Every time, every time, it's a stupid axle cut. <sighs> Ow. Alright. So, down here, the axle cup is cut, uh, caught on the, um, the metal gasket or the shield that goes around the transmission that goes against the in between the engine and the transmission um, it's caught and that's what's keeping me from going out I'm thinking if I go back in turn it counterclockwise and turn it sideways it should pop out that's my theory right now Okay. Yeah, it's still caught. <sighs> yeah, it's caught in that corner. Ah, uh, I can see it from here. Stupid axle cup. Uh. So, I removed the axle cup. It's a five millimeter Allen to remove the axle cup. Now there's absolutely nothing in the way to grab or bite on something. So now, let's remove this stupid transmission because it's now time to remove it. Roar!
I think I dropped like 10 pounds of water weight right now. It's so hot outside. All right. That everybody is how you do it. Stupid axle freaking cover cup. All right, now it's dropped. Ah, I don't see any damage on the input shaft. No. No damage. Hoo -wee! Got it out. Now we gotta get to work on removing the clutch, pressure plate, pressure plate, clutch, and flywheel, and then we'll work on putting it all back together. All right, so transmission's now down. I accidentally leaned it over to the right dumped a bunch of gear fluid but there is the pressure plate clutch and flywheel all its glory so next step here is you're gonna need a 12 point I think 8 millimeter for these guys to get the pressure plate off and then they're gonna need a triple square for the flywheel uh, we'll walk you through that process it's pretty straightforward just take off there's six of these little bolts right here This one, there's six of these all the way around. Take those off. Pressure plate and flywheel will come right off. And then, I mean, pressure plate and clutch will come off. And then we got to work on the flywheel. All right. Here comes the pressure plate. All right, let's take a look at what we have here. So you see here, here's the fly, uh, the actual clutch and the pressure plate. And if we take a look at this pressure plate, it doesn't look bad, but it's very, very shiny, um, glazing over. And if we look here, we're pretty much almost to the rivets on the material. So there wasn't much life left on this clutch uh, to begin with, so it's on its way out. Especially when you see the surface area here going to the flywheel. Um, just chunks and chunks of uh, pressure plate material coming off. Just because, again, when you tune your TDI, the stock um, clutch isn't enough. I'm just going to tell you that right now off the bat. Once you tune your TDI, you're making a lot more torque. So this just is not enough. Let's get the flywheel off and then uh, let's work our way forward. All right, so here's my trick for locking the crank so you can break free the uh, flywheel bolts. Same method to install your flywheel bolts because you're gonna have to turn those suckers hard. 
So you're going to need a 19 12 point socket and you're going to put it on the crank right over here. And you need your breaker bar. You can see right here, mine's hitting the control arm. So that's what's locking it for keeping it from turning. And that's it. Do that and you'll be able to remove the uh, flywheel bolts with no problems. And I mean like no problem at all. I already got all, of, all six of them removed. I'm going to take off the flywheel right now. So now that all six bolts are removed, let's take them off. I mean, unbolted, let's take them off. Got my little impact gun. Now, the socket you need to do this job, also for the flywheel side, is a M12 triple square. Just a heads up. All right, that's all six. Now this sucker is on there. You have to like, got to wiggle, 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 wiggle until it comes off. Where did I put my gun? Just in case. I think I forgot one. Yep. Okay, now two, four, six are all off. Now we gotta wiggle this. Just like that. Flywheel is now removed. Ah. Hmm, that's a crank sensor. That's pretty cool. It's actually on the crank at the, the outer gear. So this sprocket right here, if you guys can hear me, this sprocket is actually the crank sensor. Um, you'll see it's right here. And this pretty much gives us our timing position as well. That's pretty freaking cool. So the flywheel is not off. Uh, next is to put the new flywheel on and get you the torque specifications. All right, so now we set the flywheel to 44 foot pounds in a star pattern. Once you do that uh, on here for a star pattern, pattern, you give it a quarter turn or 90 degrees um, from straight up to the right. Um, so to lock your flywheel, to torque this to spec correctly, Again, reverse the process for your breaker bar. Put your breaker bar again, but on top of the axle now, and on here. You'll see that it's perfect for what you need it to do. It'll prevent the flywheel from turning, and you'll be able to torque your flywheel to spec. The last piece of the puzzle we'll need um, for the pressure plate. Uh, the bolts on the pressure plate are 15 foot-pounds, and that's it. No more, all right, guys? and do that in a star pattern as well. Good morning everybody, and today we're gonna to finish up on the Mark 7, but FYI, we're doing construction, so you see the big dumpster there, shovels and a little mini, that over there. Um, so it's gonna do the best I can to instruct 
with all the noise in the background. So, down here, the new flywheel clutch and pressure plate are now installed. The flywheel bolts are 44 foot pounds plus a quarter turn. The pressure plate bolts are 15 foot pounds or 180 inch pounds. All right, guys, that's it. Do everything in a star pattern for that. Now the next part of this is reverse installing pretty much the uh, transmission. So let's get to doing that. So show you guys the OEM throw bearing. You see properly used, worn. You see the notches inside here. See the grooves of the um, pretty much the pressure plate. So properly used. Brand new OEM, um, <laughs> nice and shiny and new. So uh, don't forget, you're gonna need a nine millimeter sockets to remove these three bolts off of here really quick that's in the transmission and then torque them down to specification, call it done. And um, after that, we'll take you to our Segway. Brought to you by. All right, you guys can see right now, there's the transmission. We're gonna come out. Down below, you see it's on a jack, and we laid it on the bottom of it. Kind of square it off as best you can, so that way when you jack it up, you're gonna grab from here and pull up as you're jack it up, and then try to uh, get it over to the subframe right here, uh, over that. And you're gonna have to clock the transmission to counterclockwise to get it in because if not you're gonna get stuck right here with the subframe it shouldn't take that long but just giving you a heads up when you guys take this one off I mean when you guys get it up over to this point remember you have to clock it to counterclockwise to get it over the hump and behind the actual transmission and then clock it back down and it should fall right into place again should <laughs> we'll see what happens right now all right, here we go. At this point, I need to move it in further in. Okay, I already started clocking it. Making sure I don't get caught on anything as I go up. You guys can see the back of the transmission is already counterclockwise clocked. Uh, we're almost to the height where we need to be. At this point, we'll be able to grab it from the starter hole. And right here, hopefully you guys can see that, uh, this little, I guess, groove here by the driver's side axle. And that will give us the ability to crank it and clock it back into place. It's just getting over the... Uh, over the subframe is the hardest part of this entire part uh, project here. And we are there. Now this is where we're at now. Pretty much we're, we're over the subframe. We are almost lined up with the transmission. Um, this is where you guys gotta be very, very cautious and get the uh, spline centered as best you can. Try not to drop this. Um, 
the sucker is heavy so again you guys need to know that um, so now we are over the subframe and into the subframe actually so we're sitting up right above the subframe on the back end of the trans and we're almost fully clocked correctly um, so uh, let's see let's get ready to push it in there we go Up there. Alright, so now we're officially too high on the transmission because we're passing we're passing the uh, metal wind that's right here. We gotta clock it down. Trying to find the hole that goes back here. Let's figure out how much I gotta clock this. So I only gotta go down about an inch. Almost in. Whew. We just gotta get it to slide in. That's it. But we're almost there, guys. All right, pumping out of sweat right now. Lines aren't sliding in. Oh. Let's see if I can do it from bottom down below.
Everything slide in. It's giving me an issue sliding in. It's right there, but it just won't go in. So, made a mistake. I forgot to take the, uh, the, um, the 19 millimeter 12 point socket on the crank. So it wasn't allowing the engine to turn so the uh, spindle slide in. Once I took it off, engine fell right in. <laughs> oh my God. So first bolt going in. So what you wanna do is always get the first top bolts in. Always, this will just give you the ability to get that transmission sandwiched in correctly, and then um, you can start bolting everything else up pretty much. Um, this will just allow or prevent the transmission from sliding out of its uh, guide pins and pretty much backing out on you while you're doing the, uh, the actual work. Uh, Sorry, guys. Oh man. Uh, I'm gonna go uh, get some water but this is a good time to talk about our sponsors here uh, Big Jail's Garage which is Eurotuning so check them out Eurotuning one of the best places on the internet for shopping for your European car one thing I love about them it's simple pick your make pick your model pick the chassis aka the generation Sport wagon, because that's what we're working on currently. And your engine, TDI. Let's go. Right here, everything under the sun that you need for your Mark 7 Golf Sport Wagon. I love this place. I order everything from these guys, and it's just legit. If you guys are like me, and you always want to work on something, head on over to Eurotuning and find something new for your car. Thanks for watching this, and let's get back to work. All right, so we got now the, you guys can hear me. We got the transmission, got the two bolts on top, got one on the bottom. So now a lot of the weight is already taken off the transmission and mounted to the engine. So we'll be able to support it and uh, readjust our jack so we can get this engine mounted correctly. So I already put the lower bracket in right here for the motor mount. Now we have to line this guy up over here. We're like two inches away too far from the actual uh, bracket here. So we have to line this guy up. So nice thing about this is just scoot it on over. And then start jacking the engine up. Once you jack it up, you'll see how far off we are. And then, kind of try to move it over. Um, it's only off by like half an inch now. Alright, so now it's only on the engine. So, there we go. Let's see if this will let us where we need to be. Beautiful. Look at that. Ain't that if that's not perfection, I don't know what is. Are you going to use your flathead screwdriver here? 
to help with the lining process. Now I am reusing my bolts right now because uh, my other bolts are delayed. So this is just temporary. My new ones, once they come in, I will be replacing all this hardware. Because this is TT Torque to Yield, TTY hardware. So TTYL, I think, is what it is. Abbreviation or TTY. Uh, so in other words, you just tighten them and you stretch them. And we can't be doing that and reusing them. I just gotta wait about two or three days. I think they're supposed to be here Monday or Tuesday, so it might be four days. But I'm not gonna be driving the car much, so I'm not overly concerned yet. <laughs> yet. So I already tightened them by hand. figure out where the alignment was as best we can I will torque these in a minute. Just gotta get them snug before I take the jacks off. But there you go. Jacks removed. So now that we have uh, pretty much the main part of the job done, you have to just reverse install the rest of this. This is the easy part now. Just get the all done. So we'll come back and we'll show you guys pretty much the uh, bleeding process for the for the slave cylinder here. For the throw out, uh, throw out bearing in slave cylinder, which we still have right here in the baggie, which you know a little bit of uh, brake fluid came out of it, but not too much. Um, try to think what else is there if there's anything important yet. Uh, no, we didn't take this out, so there's no adjustment needed. So we shouldn't be touching any of that. Um, we'll get you torque specifications for all this, that, hardware and the transmission. We'll probably do a flyby torque spec, I think. I haven't done that one in a while, so we'll do that. Uh, let me see here, let me see here. Yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. So I'll be back. Um, I'll be back with all of this done. And then um, we're going to do the torque specifications. We'll show you how to bleed the, the um, slave cylinder and the throw out bearing here, which is super, super easy. Um, and put everything back to the way I had it before when we started off. All right, see you guys in a little bit. All right, as always, um, we're going to give you guys a flyby torque specification starting from the top and then we're going to work our way to the bottom. So enjoy the video.
on that note, that's it. Thanks for watching this episode of Pinch Owl's Garage and how to install your brand new endurance clutch on your Mark 7 TDI. Peace out everybody and you guys have yourself a wonderful day.